When you think of the year 1988, you're probably not thinking of a year that's exactly rich with online gaming or online capabilities at all. But Nintendo will prove you wrong with their 1988 peripheral, the Famicom Network System. The Famicom Network System, or Famicom Modem, came as a result of a partnership between Nomura Securities and Nintendo. Nomura Securities is the oldest and most successful stock brokerage in Japan, and in the 80s they wanted to do even more to reach customers, allow them to check stock prices online and trade shares. What a better way to do this than with the Famicom! At the time of its development, the Famicom had shipped around 12 million units. That's roughly 10% of Japan's entire population at the time, so you can see why that seemed like a natural fit. In 1987, Masayuki Uemura of Nintendo's Research and Development 2 sector was given the order to look into a possibility of co-developing a network system for the Famicom with Nomura Securities. The good news was that Nintendo's R&D 2 department had already been throwing around the idea for a modem for quite some time, but they were worried about the cost. Under the partnership, Nomura would be developing the programming and the database of information, with Nintendo developing the modem hardware itself. Nintendo really liked this deal because they figured they could eventually use it as a jumping point for developing online games and maybe some other applications too. Okay, let's take a look at the modem itself. So, here it is, it's big and bulky. You push down to open the little cartridge slot here. The cartridges are not like normal Famicom cartridges. They're sort of these like hotel room key looking things, but really thick. You push it down into the system like that. Push this down. And then on the back here, we've got the two phone lines. So you could plug in one of the phone line cords. And then it comes with this nice splitter so you can have your other phone line as well. And plug this into the wall. It also has an Ethernet port on it, which I thought was kind of interesting. Ethernet wasn't really widespread in the 80s, but I guess it was more so in Japan. And then finally, this part right here just plugs straight into your Famicom. Just like a giant game. Like so. And it also comes with this really cool controller right here. It's got like numbers and stuff on it. Uh, an A and B button and a D-pad of course as usual, but then it also has this disconnect button which I think is kind of weird. On the inside of the modem it was equipped with some extra space just for kanji characters, as well as a public key encryption to enhance security. But since they were already using passwords for accounts and computer networking wasn't exactly very big at the time, that functionality never really saw any use. In July of 1988, Nintendo had 1,500 prototypes given to 1,500 Nomura Securities customers to test out the service. For a little bit of historical context, Japan's economy was on the rise during this time, so the Famicom modem and its stock trading program actually looked like it was going to be a really hot seller. It launched in 1988 for 19,800 yen, which is around 200 US dollars. Unfortunately, its sales were pretty badly hurt by a couple things. Number one, the system connecting the Famicoms to Nomura's host computers was pretty unstable. And number two, many would-be customers viewed the Famicom as closer to a toy than a computer and didn't really trust it to handle important financial matters. As the economy began to wane and stock prices fell across the board in the early 90s, interest halted altogether. In the end, only 130,000 units shipped. But the story doesn't end there because an unlikely savior swooped in to renew interest in the Famicom network service. And that was the Japan Racing Association. I could do an entire video on the JRA's involvement in the video game industry, but I'm going to give you the short version as it relates to the Famicom modem. The JRA is a Japanese government-run association specifically for horse race betting. Yes, gambling is that strict and horse race betting is that big in Japan that this is a necessary thing. All horse race betting goes through the government, and they saw the Famicom modem as an excellent opportunity to allow people to place bets from the comfort of their own homes. So they launched the JRA PAT, or Japan Racing Association Personal Access Terminal. It didn't launch the Famicom modems into fame and fortune by any means, but as much as 35% of those wishing to place bets remotely used a Famicom to do so. So definitely gained a cult following. A cult following so insane, in fact, that it actually ran for 24 years. People were still placing bets on their Famicom in 2015. Some of the other applications developed for the Famicom modem were the home banking system, which is exactly what it sounds like, and Super Mario Club, which allowed you to browse reviews for Famicom games. The latter was mostly set up in toy and game stores, and is really hard to find. Have you noticed I haven't mentioned any games yet? Well, unfortunately that's because there aren't any. Five prototypes were made, but they never saw the market, and I'm sure you can imagine why. It was just 
Too expensive to keep these systems communicating with each other for long periods of time. Innovative but unpopular is typically something we attribute to Sega, not Nintendo. But honestly, if you look back, there's a whole heck of a lot of that. Just never left Japan. But still, the Famicom modem's a pretty cool piece of history. Now let's talk about some fun facts! According to an interview with Masayuke Uemura, the whole reason for the partnership between Nintendo and Nomura Securities sprang from a business lecture where then-president Hiroshi Yamauchi happened to sit next to a Nomura Securities executive. Despite its mediocre sales in Japan, this was actually being considered for development in Minnesota in the United States. They wanted to bring the Minnesota State Lottery into people's homes, but due to the fluctuating online gambling laws and the fact that minors might have been to anonymously participate, the idea was canned. A very rare standalone Famicom network system console was released in Japan called the Dataship 1200. Not a whole lot is known about this system. It doesn't have a cartridge slot for actual Famicom games, so it's basically only for banking and betting. By the way, this was definitely not the first or only time a home console could go online. There was the play cable for the Intellivision and the game line for the Atari 2600 before this. And after this, Japan also had a modem for the Super Famicom. Then there was the Satellaview, you guys might have heard of Sega Channel. Honestly, there's a whole lot to say about the history of online gaming, and I hope to continue making videos about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you like learning about random semi-obscure Japanese stuff or random gaming things in general, feel free to subscribe! Thanks for watching, guys!